goodness. Good morning, good people. Mark Rolls here, my buddy Cowboy Joe Rivers, as well as all of you guys, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. It's Manic Monday, or Overreaction Monday, and <clears throat> week 12 is about to go in the books. We have the Minnesota Vikings, a surprising Minnesota Vikings without her cousins that are actually in the playoff race versus the Bad News Bears. Um, the game is actually important, believe it or not, because of the playoff if Minnesota can get this win, all of a sudden they're seven and four and right smack dab in the middle of the chase uh, for a playoff spot. So we'll be watching and live streaming that game, of course, tonight. Um, last night was, you know, uh, that was a game. I'm going to say that was a game for the ages. That game definitely will go down in infamy as one of the most lopsidedly refereed games that I think I've ever seen. I know Eagle fans will say, stop crying about the officials, but some of these calls were literally just blatant. And the Eagles, you know, sometimes you get lucky and you get the calls to go your way. Sometimes the ball bounces your way. But I wanted to just point out, just this is just a taste, just a taste. The, the calls were so egregious. The um, horse collar tackle. And the way that Josh Allen got body slammed, there was a multitude of different penalties that could have been called. And somehow, it was intentional grounding called against Buffalo. But just take a look at this for a second here. I, I know Eagle fans are going to just say, you're, you're a crybaby and everything else. But let's be clear here. Without some of these no calls that were done, or calls that were called against one side of the field and the other, they were game-changing. Take a look at just this one. So this was a big down here. Had they gotten this pass, you know, they get the first down possibly, or they, well, they get the first down if they had gotten this call. But just take a look at this. If this is a pass interference, I don't know what is. Now, you see the ball up here in the corner, right? You see the jersey... His jersey being pulled right now. The ball's not there. This official, you see him in the, the, the right there. What is the official looking at? I ask you, what is the official looking at? Are you telling me the ball has not gotten there and you see literally his jersey is being pulled like that. You, you Are you honest, Eagle fans? Are you honestly going to say you do not see the pass interference? Are we honestly going to say, because I don't know what the official's looking at. This is a case where the brother screwed us. The brother screwed us. Look at this. Are you honestly going to say that is not pass interference? Bro, bro, let's listen to the Romo and crew. He's holding him, he's holding him the whole time. Yeah, but it, usually you get a ton on a jersey like that. Yeah, that should have been a penalty. That should have been a penalty. That should, you think? He's holding him the whole time. But look, look at the official. I want you to look at the official. What is the official looking at? He's holding him. He's holding him the whole time. Yeah, but it usually you get a Officially ain't even looking at it. Yeah, it should have been. He's holding him. He's holding him the whole time. Yeah, but. But it's okay. Now, now I'm going to say some things defy logic. Because here's where it's kind of crazy. I was sitting here looking at the bill statistics before the game here. And going into this game, the Bills six and five, right? Their offense, scoring offense, is sixth, sixth in the NFL. Their yardage, sixth in the NFL. Their scoring defense, fifth in the NFL. Yardage, tenth. Now that was before last night's statistics. Somehow this team is six and five. 
And I was like, that doesn't make sense. You've got a top 10 offense and a top five defense. And, and the top five, uh, 10 offense is really just outside the top five. You, you should be destroying people. But then it, I went back to one of the things that does make sense. Because you think about the Pittsburgh Steelers who can't seem to score, but yet they're in the playoff race. Here's the thing. Turnover differential. Pittsburgh Steelers lead the NFL in turnover def- differential at plus 11. And they're in the playoff race. San Francisco is tied with them, plus 11. The Bengals, you know, the Bengals are kind of, there's still a, a, a chance for them, although they lost Joe Burrow. They're plus 10. The Denver Broncos, having now won five in a row, and where maybe we own Sean Payton and Russell Wilson, an apology, because things that we assumed early on have no bearing to where we are now. Denver Broncos get mollywopped, worst, second worst loss in the history of the NFL, 70 to 20. Now have won five games straight, including against, you know, Kansas City. They're in the playoff chase. As crazy as it sounds, they were left for roadkill. They were left for dead. And they have come back with a vengeance. And now all of a sudden, you start looking and saying, hmm, maybe Sean Payton hasn't lost it. But again, their thing, their plus eight turnover differential. Right ahead of us by one game, by one ball. We're plus seven. If you go to Buffalo Bills, they're way down the list. They have a plus one. And as you look at the teams at the bottom of the list, the only one that really is an outlier are, well, actually you can say that Kansas City having problems is minus five. And you're seeing that they're not the same team that they were. The Achilles heel for the Miami Dolphins is their minus five. And the Detroit Lions are minus five. So the rest of the losers in the NFL are all way down there. Uh, oh, and the Eagles, they're, uh, they're minus two. But, you know, again, their offense is still scoring like crazy. So you got to give them that. So for our Cowboys, we have a short week. Well, actually, it's not really a short week. We still have a full week. Um, we have an interesting week because tomorrow we'll end up having – Shaq Leonard will be coming in for a visit, surprising that the Eagles were um, allegedly knee-deep in conversations. Philly 500 believed that they had the, uh, the signing would be done like today for them. Cowboys have them coming in tomorrow on their short week because we play on Thursday night. And I am told that Dan Quinn and the defensive staff really wants Shaq Leonard and um, – you have to say with what Dan Quinn has done with this defense, anything that Dan Quinn wants, he should be able to get. He should be able to get because as we look at right now, I know everybody thinks that the Cowboys are ass, ass. And I'm going to say in the same way I say the assumptions about um, the Denver Broncos where we all looked and said, you know, Russell Wilson is done, the Denver Broncos are ass, ass, and so on, that's got no bearing on where they are right now. That's a totally different team. And I will say the team that lost to the Arizona Cardinals, that Dallas Cowboys team is totally different than it is now. And so when I look at our Cowboys, that right now we have the number one scoring offense in the NFL going into that game, uh, yesterday's games, and I don't think that that's going to change. And our defense, scoring defense, is fourth in the NFL. That you look at this and say, this team is beginning to really get themselves together, and they are getting better each week. Now, I know we've got the whole thing that, you know, it was just the Commanders, and it was the Giants, and it was the Chargers. I get that, but in the NFL... Anybody can beat you. And at the moment, you look at the Buffalo Bills, you know, they every week 
the Eagles find a way to win along with the officiating that helps them, um, they're squeaking by. And you see where the Eagles can be had. And by all measures, they should have been blown out last night. They, they honestly should have. They had the ball bounce their way. They got the breaks. They got the officiating. I still don't know what Brother Man was looking at with that pass interference right there or the grounding call that they got. But that's the way it is sometimes in football. You know, maybe they are a team of destiny to make it to the Super Bowl and maybe lose again. I don't know, but it's kind of crazy the way it's been called one-sided against everybody that they play. Let's listen into this morning how they're looking at that game. We, of course, didn't play last night, so there's not really any news on us other than um, Leonard coming in for a visit. Josh Allen, <laughs> here's the crazy thing about poor Josh Allen. The NFL changed the overtime rules because it used to be whoever scored first won. And because Josh Allen, little old Josh Allen, um, didn't get an opportunity in an overtime game, they changed the rules to say each team will get an opportunity on it. Unfortunately, since they changed that rule, Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen are 0-6 in overtime. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Okay, so we, we got to take basically this entire segment to talk about this because this game was unbelievable. You look at what Jalen did. I mean, you talk about three TDs through the air. He gets two running the football. They are, what, I think their fifth straight win when they're trailing by double digits. Your single biggest takeaway from that game. Yeah, Philadelphia has a quarterback you just can't kill. Yeah, I think that's the difference from them and so many teams. And they're the best second-half football team in, in the NFL. That's the game of the year. It, it was an MVP for performance from Jalen Hurts. And that's that conversation that gets around these quarterbacks so often. But if you just go to the end of the game to argue that and one. then that overtime drive, we're talking about 8 of 12, 6 first downs. Mm. We're talking about 30 yards rushing with a touchdown. Can you be your best, your very best, when it's needed the most. This was a team that was playing without their right tackle, without their starting tight end. And when it comes to like the flow of the game, and we're not running the ball specifically well, and we're down, and Josh Allen is having an unbelievable game. RC said this a couple weeks ago, and like I think me, in many ways, I think a lot of people were like, when RC said, there's not a better late game, big game quarterback in the NFL than Jalen Hurts, I brushed at it a little bit. And when you watch the last two weeks, you're going, okay. That's the, that's, that's the difference is Philadelphia has a quarterback that game on the line, fourth quarter, overtime, you put the ball in his hands, mm -hmm. there's a difference. Maker. And I think we get so caught up in looking at what Jalen Hurts' game is aesthetically. Right? Is it the wild throws? Are there so many wild plays? Does he play above the X's and O's from a talent standpoint? and we start to kind of diminish what he accomplished. Yeah. And I told you this on Friday, we've always found ways to quantify quarterback plays by wins, right? By stepping up in the clutch moments. In yeah. the last two years, what quarterback has stepped up as many times as Jalen Hurts? Okay. In the last two weeks, and facing who we probably all believe are the two most talented quarterbacks on planet Earth, Jalen Hurts made the plays to allow his team to win the football game. And let's be honest, in both of those games, you could say part of the reason that they are losing or they are down by double-digit double, double digit points or double-digit scores is because Jalen Hurts wasn't at his best. But when it sure. was time to be your best, when yeah. it was time to put your team on your back and win the game, Jalen Hurts did it again. And so now you're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles, and I know we talk all the time about how complete of a team it is. Right. It's not. Because there was no Lane Johnson, maybe a future Hall of Famer. Sure. There was no Dallas Goddard who has been the outlet for Jalen Hurts. It was Jalen Hurts and Brian Johnson trying to find a way to win the game. When A.J. Brown was not being the MVP candidate, yeah. he'd been the whole season. You find De Devontae Smith. You find Zacchaeus in the back of the end zone. You use your legs. And I think the Philadelphia Eagles know that in their quarterback, they have a guy that can stand across from any quarterback in the entire NFL and not only be 
on the same tier, yeah. but be a step above and a level above, and not many people have that. Right, see, hearing you talk, real quick before Rex goes, hear, hearing you talk, when you say aesthetically, I think the thing that is interesting about Jalen is he is this dynamic athlete, but in those moments, yeah. when it comes to it's what quiet. it looks like, it's quiet, it's boring, it's slow, it's quiet, it's, it's almost uh-huh. Tom Brady-ish, you know, where it's just like this, it's this death by a thousand paper cuts. It's this jab, 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 jab. Where when it's Patrick, it's wow. When it's Josh Allen, Whoa. it's wow. Honestly, though, no, like, look at his personality, though. Yes. Yeah. Right? Like, like Jalen Hurts, matches I, I have legitimately okay. said, I think and he's attempting what, to be boring as hell. Yeah. Here's what I will say. Here's what I'll say. We can have um, the conversations about Jalen Hurts and everything else and what that game is and everything else. The game in Dallas, and I don't want to look past playing the Seattle Seahawks. If the Cowboys can get a win versus Seattle, and we see Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts, that could be the game for the MVP. I'll be honest with you, because if Dak Prescott can show up and show off like he's been playing, that's going to be the most watched game of the season. Let's be clear here. That's the opportunity to seize the MVP. All right, good people. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I got work to do here at the Red Brick House. Uh, we may get started actually sanding the floors up in here because I want to get this space finished here before the holidays. And uh, working on my cabinets and things, we're going to get this place looking good. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank everybody for all of the well wishes and the prayers for our buddy Rashid. When we get uh, word from the family of all of the uh, the arrangements and things, we will be sure to let you guys know. And as always, have a great day. Peace.